It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back. Yes, the smile is wide right now. You know, I know, we all know how much we love coffee on the show, but how much do we know about the coffee itself? Bit of a gut check moment for me today. Today we are embarking on a full coffee masterclass to learn everything from the different types of beans right down to how to make, hopefully, how to make a cappuccino ourselves. And here to share his considerable expertise is a serious coffee lover, coffee professional, one of the best in the biz, Paul Jacobs from Jacobs. I'm not going to be able to let it go. Can we get a round of applause for the man who's brought all the coffee this morning? <laughs> oh, buddy, I think you've, you've found your happy place. Yeah, and I'm certainly <laughs> the right type of person to be around on a, on a time like this. Exactly, um, buddy. Thank you so much. I, I have this, this feeling that they searched the whole land until they could find a Jacobs that was this yeah. into coffee, man, which they've done. Uh, buddy, thank you so much for joining us and helping us to learn more about the fine art that coffee making mm, is mm. and well the production of the coffee in itself there are a couple of fundamentals that we need to get down here before we start making our own coffee and hopefully make a cappuccino let's get into the beans and kind of the sauce so arabica robusta seem to be mm. the two names that dominate this space what's the difference between those two what informs that sure well arabica is the most common purely because of its popularity i mean okay. arabica is a milder fruitier more pleasant sort of coffee experience accessible um mm. also that uh, originated in ethiopia now brazil is the largest producing country of arabica okay. an incredibly popular coffee um second to that would be your robusta, robusta which has always sort of been perceived as lower in quality but that's not necessarily the case it is a lot harsher in in terms of sort of taste profile, higher caffeine level as well. So if you want that kick in the morning, <laughs> hence the grab, name, yeah, the robusta, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it definitely packs a punch. Um, uh, but both both are lovely coffees, and you know the craftsmanship comes in when you actually start to blend these coffees, uh, add a bit of robusta uh, to bring out the complexities of the arabica and so forth. So they each have have their place. I, and I think often we don't think about that blending process or how the that uh, there is a production line from literally oh, growing yes. the plant oh, yes. to getting it to this point. But there are so many little nuances in how that journey can play out. When we look at a dark and a light roast, that mm. kind of to me, immediately, I'll go, light roast seems like a lighter taste, dark roast seems like a more intense. Is that right? Is that just a You spot on. Decision? You spot Fantastic. on there. But <laughs> contrary to popular belief, is a lighter roast coffee will contain more caffeine in it than a dark roast. Oh, wow. Um, because the longer you roast coffee, the more moisture you draw out of that coffee. Okay. So a light roast coffee hasn't undergone a long roasting process, which means it's got more moisture it in it. It's a heavier a bean. Oh. So it's got more of a kick. So although it tastes lighter, it actually packs more of a punch than a darker roast bean, which has almost burnt off the caffeine, if, if that makes sense. This is an interesting thing for a guy who is creating these wonderful creations. I don't know how else to describe them. You've constantly got to be thinking about that balance of caffeine oh, yes. and flavor yeah, yeah. and strength in every cup that you're making. How difficult, is this an area that we get right here in South because we love to think of ourselves as coffee snobs. Oh, yes. Oh, um, yes. Uh, I'm pretty <clears throat> easy going. I love a good coffee, and it, and yeah, it can yeah. come in in any guise or form. Is that where the magic really happens? Look, it, it's one piece of the puzzle. Um, you know, coffee is all about preference. I can't tell you how to drink a coffee. You like your coffee in a certain way. Um, as most of the crew here, we, we all in, we all individual. <laughs> say all of the crew do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> at, this, at this hour, yeah. everyone here is on their coffee. I can tell you that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one piece of the, the puzzle. I mean, if we look at these two coffees, so this is a sort of lighter roast in comparison to the darker roast here. You can quickly see the difference in yeah. terms of color. Um, your darker roast bean, you can also see, is a lot oilier mm. um, because those natural oils inside the coffee start to exit the bean. Whereas out, a medium okay. roast, this is actually a medium roast, you'll see no visible oil or very, very little visible oil. So, you know, visually you can tell the difference. Um, but yeah, in terms of strength and taste, dark roast is definitely going to give you a full, rich, dark chocolate sort of experience. Um, I love that. And then you can really give your palate what it wants, what it craves every Spot morning, on. not just about the caffeine, mm. but mm. about that flavor profile. Speaking of the caffeine, though, how does decaffeinated coffee work? Is that roasting it to the point that there's just no moisture or caffeine oh. left? Or how do you get that right? So, look, there, there, <laughs> there are multiple processes. I would say the most commonly used processed uh, would be CO2 processing. Okay. So what they do is they take the green bean, unroasted green beans, they submerge it in hot water, but hot water under pressure. What happens is the bean starts to swell up, 
and becomes porous. Okay. Think of a sponge. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what happens then is they add carbon to that water, and the carbon molecules latch onto the decaf and almost Suck it grab them and oh. pull them out. You discard the water and the carbon dioxide, you're left with wet beans, which they dry, roast, and serve in your cup. You know, you've just figured out the meaning of life. You know, we're mainly carbon-based, okay? There is a reason why we just bond yeah, with yeah. coffee and all the caffeine out. There I think go. you've figured it out. Your knowledge base is awe-inspiring, buddy, but what I've heard from the professionals in the room is that your ability to make a coffee is unsurpassed. And I, I, I'm hoping you can pass a little bit of that on to us as we're going to whip up a cappuccino with all of the trimmings a little bit later. But we're going to put this knowledge to good use. And that is the key here. You know what you like. Now go and find the coffee that matches your palate and strength. Mm -hmm. New Jacob's Barista Editions, our premium range of slow roasted coffees that even baristas use at home. Coffee shop quality at home.